Hey guys, it's time to welcome back uh, with another video for you. And today, uh, this is a video first for me personally. Um, right, basically, I've never done a YouTube video on a laptop before. Now, I have to admit, I, I have been asked several times in the past by several manufacturers, "Can you do review this for me? Can you review that for me? Can you do this?" And I've never really, up until this point in time, really been interested. Uh, I've always been concentrating my time on the actual hardware and stuff and like the kind of the stuff that most of us are going to buy. When I saw this laptop uh, and it got offered uh, to me over, you know, to send it over for review, I couldn't really say no. And you'll see in a minute, but yeah, it's the MSI GX660R. And the version that I'm reviewing today is uh, it's got an i5-460M which can run up to a maximum uh, with the turbo mode, but you'll see there's so much we've got to cover today at staff, with a turbo mode of 2.9 gigahertz. It's got 5.870 in there. It's got 8 gigabyte of DDR3 RAM. It's got uh, two 500 gigabyte hard drives in RAID 0. It's got a 1920 by 1080p display. It's got a DIN audio uh, speakers and kind of like speaker surround setup. As you know, I'm going to have to bring you in and just give you a look at this because it is just ram packed. But what we're going to do is bring you in, give you a good look around the laptop, talk to you more about some of the specs, and we'll do a few benches, do some gaming because this is, uh, you know, it is marketed 100% at the gaming market. So we'll do some gaming. But what we're going to do is we'll play some of the stuff that not necessarily, uh, whereas like um, a desktop system would easily be able to max these games out. I'm still dealing with a laptop, mobile processors, uh, uh, obviously limited cooling on the uh, graphics card. So we're going to play things like uh, Call of Duty, Medal of Honor, but I'm still going to chuck in Crisis and things like that as well, just so that you can kind of get a bit of a mix and match. I say from the very, very start, all the games are going to be played at 1920 by 1080. Listen in the videos in case I've changed the, uh, the like the um, detail settings on Crisis and stuff like that for argument's sake. But just listen out for those. But the resolution throughout will be uh, the max display that the laptop can uh, give us. Um, yeah, so let's just get you know bust it off and get in and have a look at this because there is a lot for us to look at. Right then, I really like the look of this keyboard. Obviously, you've got the WASD uh, marked there. Easy for when you're gaming, and you've got a couple of settings. I've got to admit, when you're playing games with the keypad, um, it can be quite difficult. You do need to set up some uh, sometimes, especially like with Crisis. Uh, you've got no middle button for the what would be the mouse, so you need to set up like keyboard shortcuts. So kind of bear that in mind, but not being funny, if you're buying a laptop you'll and you're looking at it for gaming, you'll be well aware of this and you'll be looking and you'll be alright, you'll be able to set it all up. Can be done. I found it quite difficult. When I play the games in a bit, I am going to do it with a mouse, um, just so that the actual gaming footage will be a bit better. Now the keyboard uh, does look like an Apple keyboard to me. I'm not saying that it is, I'm saying that the design is very Apple-ish, the way that the keys are spaced and the corners are all rounded and then you've got this quite exposed area in between. Uh, it does help uh, that you're not smashing the wrong keys when you're playing games. But something that I have noticed, now I've tried this a couple of times and the camera's not really picking it up, but in this area of the keyboard, when you press, I'm not sure whether it, you can see, but the actual bit there, you know, the back bit of the keyboard moves down as well. Now that only happens around this area of the keyboard. When you do it, it, you can, it moves ever so slightly. If you do it at the other end, it's absolutely rock solid. It's like you're smacking on a bit of granite, and this is lovely. But when you type it up here, it does sound hollow. And it just, I think, personally, this bit here needed a bit more support. Now, it doesn't really affect the use or anything like that, and this is just me being super picky, as I always am. But like I said, it's like Jekyll and Hyde. This area of the keyboard is lovely. You can even hear a difference. You come up this end, you can hear 
the difference. It's just I, th I think this kind of area just needed a tiny little bit more support to stop that flex and to make the type in there a bit easier. They might have done it on purpose because it is right the way around the WAS a WASD bit and this bit area is obviously going to get smashed when you're gaming. Um, but it's just something I picked up. Make of it as you will. Just to quickly show you the connectivity around the uh, laptop. On the left hand side you've got two USB 3's then you've got a card reader USB 2 and then this is a PCI Express card expansion slot. So I slide it round, around the back. Uh, far left you've got the power connection, then you've got gigabit ethernet, then you've got a D sub uh, monitor out, then you've got an eSATA port and then you've got a HDMI port and sliding it around again in our lovely raw fashion that we always do you've got audio connections at the front another USB port and then on uh, my model you've got a uh, Blu-ray drive it really depends on the model that you get uh, around the front there are no connections as such so yeah that's the connectivity right then guys the flicker on the screen is just because of the refresh rate of the screen and my camera kind of getting all funky together. You remember like in the old days when you get a news article on the telly and something and there was a TV in the background that flicker. Anyway, it's that. So don't worry about that. That's not the screen actually doing it. But we'll start at the front. I'll kneel down. On the um, pad here, there's a selection uh, of display lights got one there for Bluetooth and then you've got another one for the Wi-Fi then the battery because the battery's charging at the moment the moon for the sleep mode I've never been able to get that off so I don't know what that's for I've looked in the manual but anyway it all, always seems to be on and then you've got a hard drive activity light here these white bits around the outside don't light up I've never been able to light them up but anyway but the uh, mouse pad is textured um, I know the camera is not going to pick it up but it's not smooth as you would expect with most laptops uh, you've kind of got this checkerboard kind of snake skinny type look at the front it's still very smooth and slippery but it gives it a bit of texture you've got the sticker here so that you can see all the details pause if you want to see that in detail And then obviously over to this side it says that it's got the DTS surround uh, i5 uh, 5870 it did come with Windows 7 Home Premium as well right now DIN audio this plays a massive part of this laptop I will give you an audio uh, demonstration in a bit and we'll have the audio on in the games um, but this is one of the major selling features of this laptop as you can tell by the uh, background that uh, MSI left on it but yeah the P1 button right this is a user configurable button uh, there's some software on the computer you can set that to do whatever you want basically you can get it to open a program for argument's sake if you hit that button it could open crisis MSN whatever you wanted got a turbo button here and it changes up on the screen when the turbo is on and off the next button is a fan button It's at the moment it has got a fan on but it's not very loud it just sits there running really quietly in the background almost passively when you hit this on the fan goes turns right up for like heavy gaming sessions or if you've got it on your lap doing any really intensive using any really intensive applications now I'm going to flick it on quickly now and we'll let that warm up again this button I keep pressing it I've looked and I haven't got a Scooby what it does now don't mind admitting that I looked in the manual I couldn't really find it 
doesn't seem to make any massive difference to anything either. I don't mind sounding like an idiot because at the end of the day this is a TTL review. Right, the fan's warmed up now. Don't know whether you can hear that. What I'm going to do now, while you're right down near the front of the camera, is I'm going to turn it off so that you can hear, hear it all wind down. Right, just switched it off. Hear it warming down. And it goes right back to really quiet. Still slowing down now. Right, that's it. It's back down to kind of what I would call um, uh, its basic state. Right, moving along. This is the wireless button. Then you've got a Bluetooth button here because it has got Bluetooth built in. And then you've got two buttons here. This one's the eco button and then this one is for the uh, lights. But eco button uh, actually has several different settings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the screen. Oh, you can see me. And I'm going to keep pressing the button and you'll see the flashes come up on the screen. Okay. Right. So we've got gaming mode just flashed up there. If I press it again, you get movie mode. Presentation mode. Office mode. Turbo battery mode. And then eco off. And each one of those settings has a different uh, levels for the display, CPU settings, there's lots of different ones, so you can pick what one, uh, which setting is best for your, you know, moment in time that you're using the PC for. So that's great. But I said it had a button for lights, and it does because the laptop is covered in lights. Now it's very bright in here at the moment, obviously for the um, uh, recording. But we've got lights on both sides, at the front and around the sides. When we go round the side there's more lighting up the side of the monitor screen and then I tilt the screen slightly forward there's another one that runs right the way across the back but also that MSI logo is actually lit up now if I cover it up you can see it so it does light up now obviously I should really um, I shot this in the dark so I could show you better but they're just at the end of the day they're on I just want to show you something quickly so if we come down here it has got a interface uh, or a little program whatever you want to call it where you can see where all the different lights are on the laptop and you can turn them all on and off independently but also it's got uh, three modes default mode is just with whatever ones you've chosen on on breathing as it sounds they do just throb in and out and breathe and then an audio one I'll show you audio in a minute but to be perfectly honest audio is a bit disappointing because what happens really is the one at the front they flash with the bass and then this one here moves up and down now you'd think that it would move up and down to do with like the graphic equaliser irrespective of the volume but you'd be wrong which is where it gets disappointing because you have to turn it up really loud for it to flash all the way up you might not necessarily want it really loud but if you've got it on what I would call a normal kind of setting you only get the first two lights moving and it's a bit pants um, I'll show you that again in a sec. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set it to audio now while I remember. And apply it. And I, when, when we do the audio, in fact we'll do it now. Okay, right, give me two seconds and I'll bring the web pages up for the audio. Right then guys. 
Uh, this is just the uh, audio menu or program that controls everything, the audio manager. I know you're seeing the flickering, but like I said, that's just because the um, the, res the refresh rate on the camera and the screen are matching. But anyway, right. We've got a DTS boost section, but we're going to be having that off today. And then in another part, we've got a surround sensation speaker. That's great for games and movies, not so good for music. And then you've got some more settings underneath. You can enable voice clarification, enable bass enhancement, and choose between music and movie. Although I really don't like the speakers on surround with music at all. That's just my own personal opinion. Obviously I'm not going to be able to show it up on the camera very well either, but I'm really not a fan of it. You can only enable these extra settings when you've got the uh, surround speaker set to, um, set to on. But music-wise, I need to thank One Rock FM because I've got specific permission to be able to use their streams in my video. You can see that they've got my um, logo and everything on the uh, on their front page. That's Randy Fender, the owner there in the uh, in the picture. Now, when you click tune in on their website, uh, it takes you to a second site where they stream from. That's just for legal reasons, and do you know what I mean? Because obviously, music always belongs to someone. And anyway, long and short of it, it's all right. You go to this page and you listen to it. Uh, although you can find it on iTunes and many other places as well. If you go to the um, hard rock and metal section of the iTunes radio, you can find One Rock F F FM down near the bottom. But let me turn this on now. You're going to get hear a big burst of music. See, as you turn it up and down, the lights go up and down. I'm just showing you that quickly. I'll turn it back up again now and you'll see it go back up. I think it should do this all the time. Be up real high. Right. Big thanks to One Rock FM for permission to play that. I know it's only short, but we're not here to listen to music. Uh, another place that I've got specific permission from, from the owner, is DIFM. And it's quite literally DIFM. www.di.fm. Now I'm subscribed to this. I've actually got a premium account here, and I love this radio station. Um, just as much as One Rock FM, but these are two completely different genres, and I do like uh, a range of music. Now, one of the things I really like is they've got an option to stream in 256k broadband. Now, because I didn't really think ahead, um, I've not loaded up the codec onto the laptop because I am utter fail. But you've got many other options that you can go to 128k, 64k. So we're going to listen in 128k, which is um, Still going to be amazing. This is on the trance section.
Now I need to stress that these are laptop. This is a laptop. There's no speakers attached anywhere else. And I just had it turned right up to the max then. And it sounds incredible for a laptop. I mean, I know this isn't gonna... Yeah, let me turn it back up again. Now, I know it might be lacking ever, well, it is a bit lacking in the real bottom end bass grunt, but for a set of laptop speakers that are that clear and crisp, not being funny, I've heard desktop speakers that sound worse than that, just hollow. These sound absolutely amazing. Um, but what we're gonna do now, is gonna move on to some gaming um, and then, uh, yeah, basically, we're going to play some games. We're going to have all the audio on again, so you're going to be able to listen to Crisis and everything like that with the audio up. Um, and I'm also going to turn the uh, 3D and everything uh, on as well. Although you won't be able to pick it up on the camera, it's just so that you get a mixture of the two. Um, yeah, so let's move on to the next part. Right then, guys, I've set the camera up. Uh, I've also set a mouse up. I'm now using a mouse to move the cursor about. Now I've got the camera set up right in front so it's going to be difficult for me to try and gain so if you catch my any reflections and stuff it's just because I'm trying to move around to be able to uh, get at the keys a bit easier because this is going to be a bit of a uh, um, contortionist kind of way to try and review this. I'm going to end up hugging the camera but I've got fraps open uh, I'm just going to open hardware monitor quickly and this is so that we can record temperatures while we do the tests and the games. We'll open that and we'll move that over to this side of the screen, we'll leave that out of the way. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick one of Alien vs Predator. Obviously we've got the audio on for you as well. Fraps open in this top left hand corner. Now, resolution, as I stated previously, is 1920 by 1080. Uh, so, frames per second there, yeah, fair enough, it is down in the mid-20s. Uh, you could easily get that bumped up. But don't forget, uh, even with cards like the GTX 560, the frames per second is only going to be around 50 or 60. We are powering the laptop for all of this uh, off the mains, by the way. Just realised I didn't have the audio up. So that one's done. I'm going to do uh, Resident Evil and DirectX 9 just quickly. <laughs> you can see the camera in the screen. <laughs> Hello. Anyway, stop messing about, Tom. Uh, what I will do is I will show you the system settings quickly, just so I can prove to you. 1920 by 1200, frame rates unlocked, everything's maxed out. That's as far as we can go with the settings on this. Fixed benchmark. Oh, 
frames per second here and up the top. Obviously this is Resident Evil 5. One thing I will say is it says uh, the CPU is at 2.53 gigahertz. That's its kind of stock setting. Obviously the turbo, it will now be running at 2.92. You can see there, HD5817. In fact, that we're in 1920 by 1200 and we're in uh, DirectX 9 mode. Now we've seen enough of this. It's floating around the kind of 50, uh, 40 to 50 frames a second. The repetitive audio on this does my head in. So we'll come out of this and we'll move on to the next one. Right then guys, uh, you can still see my reflection. <laughs> Hello! Uh, right, we are on to Call of Duty. Now uh, again, I don't play these type of games very often so please don't be rating my uh, gameplay. Please be rating kind of the frames per second up in this top uh, left hand corner of the screen, the quality of the screen itself, uh, listen to the audio as well. Uh, yeah, so pretty much everything other than me. Uh, so, yeah, we'll play it on, and uh, I, you know, apologise now if I play badly, but it's really quite difficult for me to play. <laughs> Fifty two frames a second up there. Don't forget this is a laptop. Still fifty. Oh, we've just gone down to forty two frames a second then. Like I said, I'm really not very good at this. I haven't got a clue what's going on, really. I'm just going to run about. Down to 35 frames a second there for a second. That's enough of uh, Call of Duty. Um, you know, I apologise for my terrible gameplay. We're going to move on to some Medal of Honor now. Right, guys, uh, ready for Medal of Honor now. Sorry for the reflections and stuff like that, but it's just because this screen is uh, quite shiny, shiny. I suppose well, if I do it like that, it might be a bit easier for you to see. Don't forget the frames per second up here. One thing that is good to note. I'll talk about it later on, is the viewing angle of this screen is really good. But I'm going to leave it like that because that looks a little bit better this time. And we're going to go back into the game again. I apologise, I'm not that great. Just 
just to show you what's going on. Got a solid 40 frames a second there. As I said, I'm really not very good at this. Still 40 odd frames a second there for a laptop. Really haven't got a clue where I'm meant to be going now. Right guys, that's enough of our Medal of Honor. I think it's time we break out crisis. Right then guys, just wanted to show you quickly, we've got the anti-aliasing off, full screen on. Uh, resolution is 1920 by 1080. But we've got the uh, all the texture settings on mainstream. Turn it up to gamer, it does dip below 30 quite a bit, so we're putting it on mainstream just to show you in the game today.
chop us down. pretty quickly on this because trying to play this at this angle just ain't working. Look up in that top left hand corner though. 38 frames a second on crisis on a laptop. Show you some explosions for the sake of me dying. Down to 33 frames a second. Still over 30 frames a second. Going up to 40. Anyway, we'll call that it for crisis, guys. <laughs> Just to show you a 3D mark vantage score quickly. P score, 7,917. 7,835 on the GPU and 8,175 on the CPU for performance. And then if we come over, you can see the maximum temperatures here and here for the CPU, uh, 73 and 74, and then 76 on the graphics card. And that was throughout all of our gaming and benchmarking. So a very respectable score, really. Like I said, it's a laptop, um, and the temperatures are pretty good as well. Right then, guys. I've turned the laptop round um, so that you can <laughs> you can kind of see the light up bad, uh, but also so it's not flickering at the screen while I'm trying to do the conclusion. Um, the GX 660R uh, certainly crams a lot of uh, high-end bits for a laptop, all in that small package. Uh, obviously, uh, 1,099 quid. It's a lot of money for a, a laptop. You could go to one of the like normal electrical retailers and pick up some basic Celeron thing for about 300 quid. Uh, but to be perfectly honest, 
I wouldn't even like suggest using one of those things just for like a netbook or something. Uh, yeah, I don't even need to talk about cheap stuff because this is solely aimed at people that want the best kind of package that you can have in a notebook for kind of a, a proper enthusiast really, someone that wants to play games and that still wants to be able to you know go about and do relatively um, uh, demanding tasks on their laptop on the move. Now uh, battery wise I've got 75 minutes of crisis gameplay on a full battery without uh, with a full battery from the time that I started playing or disconnected the power till when it shut down, so 75 minutes. Uh, with general web use, listening to a bit of music, surfing, that kind of thing, I got 2 hours and 25 minutes of uh, use. So um, it's actually still, do you know, even though it's got all that in there, it still lasts for a heck of a long time. Obviously when you're playing something like Crisis, everything's being stressed pretty much to the max. So 75 minutes is pretty cool. Um, I'm quite, this is, uh, at the end of the day, just imagine being able to get on a train, now you're going to be on the train for a couple of hours, and then go, right, stick some headphones in and start playing Crisis. It'd be it'd be amazing. I certainly think that you get some looks. Obviously, this isn't a MacBook, but you know, what I mean, with all the lights and everything, people are definitely going to be going. You know, what the bloody hell is he doing? Um, obviously, it's quite difficult for me to be able to compare this to other stuff. Uh, now, I've got a MSI Slimline laptop, and it's just it's just a Core Two Duo. Thick, do you know what I mean? It's just it looks pretty. It's small. It's light. Now, this is quite chunky. It's quite thick, but. Uh, it, like I said, it's a gamer, and uh, the the screen quality is amazing. I've not been able to show you any film footage, uh, but if you get a Blu-ray in there and start watching films, flip that little 3D surround thing on, um, maybe turn the sub up a couple of notches or the bass boost up a couple of notches, and it's absolutely incredible. The screen is clear and crisp, you see all the colours perfectly. Um, the audio completely immerses you in the films as it does with games. It's it's brilliant. Um, now, the, uh, while we're talking about the audio, obviously, like for music and like in your house, turning it on, it's not going to be as good as having some having like a stereo or a decent set um, of audio speakers. But for a laptop, these are immensely loud, really clear just a bit lacking on the base but it's because it's in a laptop they're not going to strap an 8 inch sub to the bottom of it are they pretty much ticks every box and it's only really with the music that you kind of miss it and the games and everything it's alright uh, with films it's perfectly adequate it's an absolute cracker that the din audio side of things I was a bit kind of do you know what I mean because I had some bad experiences with laptop audio I mean the last laptop I had the uh, the MSI one uh, before the slim one was the, the audio on that was uh, pretty gash. Um, uh, the slim one's alright, but this is just nuts. Um, yeah, just so clear. It really, really did surprise me, especially with films and games. I can't stress that to you enough. Uh, now the frame rates. A lot of you are going to be going, oh, didn't really play this, didn't really play that. Don't forget, we're talking about it's a mobile CPU, there's a mobile graphics card in there as well. It's not like the fully fledged kind of um, uh, the PC stuff. The scores that this was pumping out are crackers. Bearing in mind that this is a thousand pound laptop, not like some of the ridiculous SLI and Crossfire ones that you can get that are like two thousand, three thousand pounds plus. This is a laptop that MSI have brought out, and I'd say this is kind of a really well placed game and laptop price as well because if you, if you started skimping out getting cheaper it would be a much worse uh, the scores would be much worse but they have kind of mixed that what it can deliver for the price bit I think absolutely spot on uh, and the only my only real niggle and it is a very small niggle is that kind of that bit around the, uh, the WASD where it seems to move but 
as I said uh, in the video earlier. I don't know whether they've done that on purpose, so there is a bit of a flex there because they know you're going to be smashing and leaning on that bit. Um, so I don't know. Uh, if it's meant to be that way, it annoys me and I don't like it. Uh, the only other niggle was the uh, lights on the side that I said about with the audio. Bring an update out MSI. So that goes up and down to the top uh, without, you know, the volume doesn't make any difference because to only get two lights when you've got a normal kind of volume is stupid. You should be using the whole range all the time in with the music. Uh, and that can't be our fix, really, can it? Uh, if you were going to have it on music mode, then that's the way I'd want it anyway. You know, like a graphic equaliser dancing on your stereo. Um, you turn your stereo up, the graphic equaliser doesn't suddenly go up a range, does it? No. So it should be, you know, to do with a graphic equaliser rather than, you know, how loud the actual uh, uh, the speakers are. Um, but other than that, I've thoroughly enjoyed using this. Uh, it is an absolute cracking laptop and like I said I've not got a massive amount of experience so I've just tried to kind of explain everything to you um, from as my best abilities and then we can kind of get a you know a mixture of what you know and what I know but if you are looking for a gaming laptop and you've got a grand to spend to be perfectly honest I had a look around online last night I can't see anything that would even remotely come in close to this um, so yeah an absolutely cracker of a laptop from MSI. Uh, just so many little kind of tiny features and uh, touches and kind of attention to detail. Really really like this. Really really like it. So, uh, award. Don't really go without saying really. It's gold award. It's just, it's cracking. It's absolutely amazing. Big kudos to you MSI. Um, I expect many more things from you soon and uh, we may be doing some other stuff with them very soon as well. Um, so yeah, keep an eye on the channel. I was going to say it then but I'm not going to. Um, I can see it though. Uh, so yes, keep your eye on the channel. There's plenty more to come. Uh, I've, yeah, I have thoroughly enjoyed this. I'm going to miss it. I really am. Anyway, this is Tiny Tom Logan with the MSI GX660R gold award winning gaming laptop, absolute corker of a laptop. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe and comment. I'm uh, obviously this is the first kind of laptop review I've done so we're just gonna we're gonna see how it goes and see what people think but I do want to hear back from you. Anyway, Tiny Tom Logan, out.